Hello there. Welcome back to the Senate Podcast, episode number 28. I'm joined by the one who has returned from exile, Tony Quinn. Real quick, because we, like, we want to talk about games because we can't really talk about movies and shows that much. Yeah. I'm still going to see movies. Yeah. I'm still watching shows. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's getting a little out of hand. It's getting... Now there's two of them. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Tony, go ahead and, and it's your time to shine. Uh, explain what's going on. Explain what's... Um, okay. Activating leftist mode. Uh, that's a reference to Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, where when a, what? When a combat encounter starts, it says, activating combat mode. Okay, so... I thought they said that in the game. Like, what's what? happening is that um, people are uh, finally standing up to their capitalist overlords. And they're saying, we've had enough of, you know, not properly being compensated for our work, not being treated fairly. We don't... We're, we're simple people. We see AI that could replace our voice without us getting any of the money or the consent. And we don't want... 10 seconds um there were a lot of people ignorant people in my opinion that were like oh what these you know these uh rich people are mad that they're gonna be less rich it's like first of all um people like matt damon robert downey jr christopher nolan they're not on the picket lines for themselves they're obviously fine they're they're wealthy they care about the people under them you know that don't make that much in residuals that you know are working class actors because believe it or not they exist and you know some people are like why why should i care about the strike why should i care if we were protesting they wouldn't care about us which you know is like f first of all I don't, they don't even know who you are. I don't know, like, why do you need other people to care about your problem? I, but, like, y you don't have to care. Nobody has to care about anything. Like, I don't understand this. Like, I don't have to care. Well, you cared to make a video about it, you freaking idiot. But, like, not like, as somebody who, you know, wants to be an actor in some capacity, like, you know, I care about, you know, I want the climate to be fair. I want, you know, equity for everybody. Um, I want fair treatment for everybody. Um, and you know, that doesn't necessarily like, it sucks that it has to be, uh, that that has to be gained through, you know, a uprising and a protest. But I mean, when Bob Iger says we're going to wait till the strikes over and people lose their homes and, you know, um, I just saw that this isn't related, but Andrew Tate's building this like AI thing. That's like a new planet. And he's having, he's, he's like, sign up on my website now. And you know, like you see all this stuff happening and you know, like apparently like FedEx workers are striking, other workers are striking. Like, yeah, enough is enough. You know, I've, you know, we've all had enough of this bullshit where, you know, we work and work and work and we don't, we can barely make enough to get by. We just have to grind our lives away. We can't have fun. We can't enjoy life. You know, no wonder people are drinking, smoking, whatever the case may be. And, you know, to sound, you know, to be even more of a leftist, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to what's going to be on the other side of this. And um, I think it's great. I think, you know, I I want more people to start striking. So these rich assholes, sorry for my language, but I'm just passionate about this, um, can finally realize the error of their ways. And, you know, I hope that happens. Um, I try to be an optimist, but also the cynical part you of me. You have to be a real, yeah, you have to be yeah, real. Yeah, like the realist. realistic, cynical part of me doesn't, totally feel like humanity can really change the world but i mean if you look at history there have been periods where people said enough is enough and they revolted and things changed so i mean 
you, you know, like if you know whatever it takes, I guess. And um, I don't like capitalism, so uh, at least so, not the yeah. stage of capitalism we have. I'll put it that way. But if it has I, to be just abolished altogether, then cool. I'm all for it. I kind of want to talk. I kind of want to echo. Con- I think what Stephen Amell was trying to say that he got taken out of context. It's a really funny situation, but he kind of was like saying that he hates the strikes. And I kind of feel the same way because the strikes shouldn't have to happen for there to be this change. But if there's people, you know, over you that can take advantage of you, there's a good chance that they'll take advantage of you. So like with the, not just the actors, but also the writers, you know, I, I really feel for, the writers you know too because they're in the background and you know we see the faces of the actors that bring us these stories and and entertainment but it's also you know such a big part of the of you know the writer's work too that we have these amazing stories and and whatnot so you know i hate that they have to go on strike like this but they have the right to do it and if you know it's not fair if they're not getting paid they could leave um but also if they're not getting paid, they could, they have the right to go on strike too. And I think if they can go on strike successfully and, and get what they deserve or what they're asking for or whatever, then they should do it. And I think that's what they're doing. So, uh, I'm just for, at the end of the end of the day, like just getting better, um, treatment for people and still getting our entertainment because I, I love content creators. I, you know, I support, the creators i don't i want to go see the movie so that yeah the company makes money so that the people that created it can move on to create better things and get paid adequately and stuff i know they get paid up front but you know if a movie fails you know the writers and actors are out of work yeah if the movie succeeds the people higher up get more money but you you almost can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So I kind of do want to, I do want to go watch movies and, and shows and talk about it still, because I want the people that created it to see that we love it and support it and that they get paid from it. You know, if it's, if it's a full strike that says, okay, nothing is getting made, nothing is getting watched, nothing is getting talked about until we get more then that's that route. But there's, it's just hard for content creators because it's 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 like the actor, you know, for Blue Beetle. He was talking about, man, I love this movie. I love what I did with the movie. There was so much love by everybody and care that went into it, and we can't even talk about it. We can't even support it, and that's just it's sad. So it's just a really sad situation. So that's just kind of what I want to echo from Stephen Amell's point of view. Like, if that's what he was trying to say, I think it was that. It's just really sad that we have to strike like this, but. If that's what it takes, you know, then you have the right to do it. Uh, you know, it's, I guess, big, you know, companies, you know, corporations want you to think, oh, it's a good versus bad thing. But it's not. It's just a way of these people that are giving us the content and going about it to get paid, you know, adequately so they can keep doing what they love and keep giving us, you know, more of what we love from them. So I think that's, you know, my kind of just take on it. And it's just, you know, it's it's upsetting. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, they need supported and they need paid adequately so they can continue doing their job and we can continue getting the products, you know, we love from creators that love putting out that product. Cause at the end of the day, they're not, it's a job. They're not forced to be writing the stories we love. They're not forced to be acting in the stories we love. They do it because they want to do it. They love doing it. And they're going on strike because they love doing it and they want to keep doing what they love. So it's just um it's a tough situation. So I guess one of the silver linings though is that uh independent studios and filmmakers can apply for what they call an interim agreement. So they could like, you know, make their projects if, you know, uh SAG says yes. So, you know, yeah. I'm excited to see a rise in, like, independent stuff. You know, yeah, like, maybe yeah. people get a little more creative with what they, you know, make and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, Mark Ruffalo, I think it was you who sent me that tweet 
that um he said that like you know actors and actresses um should jump to independent stuff so i want to end it uh with this and literally the same thing you said right there we got star wars from an independent filmmaker you know what i mean i think corporations have used their money and power to gobble up ip and talent that they can control to generate more money you know you know how you know how it goes yeah but i think all of this kind of siphoning down into into independent companies independent creators is the best case scenario because we get some of the best content look at rebel moon that's coming out yes it's by netflix but it's more of an independent project than it than from a big corporation you know what i mean yeah. it's not the best example but you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah um it wasn't gobbled up by by disney for a star wars project you know zach's going out to make a project that he wants to make as an independent filmmaker with the help of you know netflix but anyways you see what i'm saying here so i think um if it if it gets siphoned down from these big business you know corporations wanting to just capitalize on the money and the revenue and whatnot and the image and the name and and the ip and the branding whatever i think if it siphons down into independent creators really just being able to do what they love and still being able to make a living off doing what they love i think that's best case scenario from this um so i think i think you know the, obviously something is going to change but we just have to wait and see what it is yeah and then uh the strike does not affect video games so yes so we're going to talk about video I'm games. sure there's going to be a rise in people auditioning for oh, video yeah. games which is cool yeah. So I mean, you never know what you know people can cook up in the midst of all of this stuff. Obviously, within the strike parameters, but I mean, yeah. This I'm is going to be a like, huge. I'm not personally mad about like no big studio stuff being made for a while because yeah, I haven't really been into that stuff for the past it few hasn't years been anyway. Good so I, in years, I don't care, man. Whatever. I mean, I've been I've been going crazy this year off of like Guardians and Flash, but those have felt like fan like love letters to the fans from you know people that love making it or like you know a Tom Cruise movie like Mission Impossible. Yeah, it was you know it feels like it's made with love, but the stuff that is just kind of like cookie cutter, you know, business, you know, you know, company, big corporation stuff that they're putting out, it just has felt like garbage recently. So. You know, I'm hoping to see more of this stuff that we we love that it feels like it's made for us out of, you know, it, creators, independent or just, you know, independent, you know, light creators, almost like a James Gunn type of person that makes movies and sticks to his vision because he loves it. Not like it's oh a cookie cutter. We got to put this out for the revenue type of thing. So but anyways, you're right. We're going to see probably a lot of people going switching over to the games industry which you know i mean they make tons of money they got the money yeah so we'll, we'll see what happens there uh, this is going to be a huge topic of discussion if i get my you know interview type episode out with the person i want to talk to so I, we're going to talk about it more in the future but uh tony it has been a huge pleasure today getting with you after a while away yeah, to talk sure. about games and strikes i'm not sure what i'm going to name the episode but uh it's episode 28 it's over it's been fun we've got given a lot of information with games and movies but real quick give me a recommendation for this week of something i could play or watch or whatever i'll give you a recommendation okay Risk of Rain 2. It's a great action game. It's a great uh, roguelike game. If you want some shooting, some action, great roguelike mechanics, something fun, great music, a really cool design and kind of lore, amazing game. Awesome. Um, I guess my recommendation, I haven't, I have like three movies left and there's the spinoff that was released like a year ago and there's a another movie coming out i think this year but the i've been going through the saw movies dude <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely bonkers like at the okay. end of every movie Crazy I'm, random. I'm just like what like i mean there's some okay. retcons i haven't been a fan of but i mean you're gonna get that with any long-running franchise but like 
this feels like you know the kind of like insane uh, unpredictable twist and turn writing that i just love like i think like the mystery thriller pocket yeah. has been my favorite genre recently there's a lot of video games like that that i want to play you know other movies and stuff like i i just can't recommend it enough if you just want uh yeah a crazy time you know just order some pizza get some chips and soda watch some saw movies and just have a freaking blast it's a great recommendation for the week and i've been in the mood for a mystery thriller i've been wanting to watch the batman again so all right that's been fun episode 28 Tony, thanks for coming on with your crazy views. All you, uh, you, radic- <laughs> you radical, you uh, radical, <laughs> radical boy. Fight the power. I'll end it. I'll end it there. I'll end it at that. Fight the power.